Lager, 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 Gustav. Get your Gustav t-shirts at hoopsmerch.co.uk. Talking about Gustav. He says, he says it was absolutely satisfying to silence Ibrox. It was nice to keep Ibrox Brox quiet, he says. <coughs> My throat is still getting over the weekend. He says, I'd been given a little warning, says Gustav. He says it, uh, it was kind of cooler than what I thought. It was very important that we won there. The meltdown that we've seen all week has been absolutely fantastic. The weekend's win was absolutely fantastic. We're four points clear at the top of the league in the international break, which means we've got a little bit of a, a break from the league. It says, but, it says, when you look at it, he said, it's been great at Celtic so far. He says, the guys in the team, the management have been very welcoming. And he said, straight away, it's been very educational. He says, uh, to beat the Huns was fantastic. He says, I've got a lot of improvement as a player. He says, but going forward, I'll continue on an upwards trajectory. Talking about people that are on the up. Yang is a prospect that we brought into the club on a five-year deal in July. And since then, he's been absolutely... It looks as if he's going to be some player. And he's had his full debut for South Korea uh, last night. He had his full debut for South Korea. Uh, so that's just probably added a little bit more to him. Um, and it's going to be fantastic for him. Also, he's a player that once he gets up and running, um, I think he's going to be fantastic for Celtic. He's got some pace about him. Jurgen Klinsmann was at the game at Ibrox. And um, he's, he's rewarded them. He's rewarded them with his first start for his country. He says, um, you know, he came on for the final 10 minutes of the game, but, you know, it was a 0-0 draw with Wales and Cardiff, but he's made his international debut, so that's fantastic for him. Right, UEFA. UEFA have announced, obviously, the different format in the league next season. And the good thing about it is it's, it's even more reason to win the league because the money that is involved, obviously, there's the new format, uh, we have spoke about it slightly, and this, this is the last year where if you finish third, uh, you'll get to drop down into the Europa, and um, that's something that we seem that we all want to aim for this season, is uh, you want to aim for the Europa so we can get to Dublin, because then we're all off to Dublin in the green in, in May. That would be absolutely brilliant if Celtic were to do that. Anyway, if we look at the revenue that we got last year, um, we received around about 31 million euros, Next season, next season, if we if we get into the Champions League, if we win the league, but we're going to win the league. We're pretty much confident now, aren't we? Is it is it too early to be confident? Is it too early to be that um, cocky and confident that we're going to win the league? Surely not. Let's let, we'll leave that to Christmas. But if we do win the league and uh, we go into the Champions League before we sell any tickets, now I know that fans are a bit aggrieved that the price of tickets went up this year, um, but that's just Celtic. It's the way to do it. Um, when you look at the money that we're going to get next season just from TV revenue from UEFA, it's going to be 41 million euros, which comes in around about 45 million pounds. Um, and that's before we even mention ticket sales and everything else that goes along with it. We, we will qualify automatically next season for the Champions League by winning the league. So it's another huge campaign for us. And going forward, you know, that's where we want to be. That's where we want to be in the new format. You know, we're going to play more games um, rather than the amount we're playing now. I think we play eight games, which will be a bit more exciting. A bit more exciting. So tell me what you think in the comments. And it was great reading the comments this morning. I read, I read through some of them. Busy work with work this week, so um, I haven't been on as much as I will have liked to be, but I will be on for the Friday Night Live. You always know what to do. An hour live on a Friday night, so make sure that you have subscribed to that. And it will probably go on, I'm not quite sure this time yet, if it's going to be quarter past five, Celtic part-time, or a little bit later. Anyway, Tom Boyd, my old Tom Boyd, Boyd is a, uh, Tom Boyd's an absolute cracker, he's a Celtic man through and through. He's been talking about the Glasgow Derby also, and he says that he wasn't surprised by the way that our captain, Callum McGregor played at the weekend. He says he's driven us on quite a few times in games. What did surprise him was the space that he was given to do it. And I, I spoke about it during the game. Um, it was, it was, I found it strange that Rangers were pushing the three front guys so far up, and their midfield players were sitting so far back. And it was just given, it was given Callum a free reign in the middle of the park. And even Boydie says that. I don't know what was their tactic, um, but he says, look, when you look at it. Some people try to man Mark Callum, and I think if the Sevco tried to do that, they didn't do it very well. You know, it's a tactic that he's came up for a couple of times this season, but he was pivotal 
He was absolutely pivotal to the game at the weekend, and uh, that's why Celtic were so controlling. He says, people say that he's the catalyst. He produced uh, some wonderful passing at the weekend. He's the engine room. And you, you will go into the next couple of games, you'll go and see Callum McGregor will get man-marked again. I think that's Celtic need to change the system. And they did change the system. It was more direct, which was kind of good. Um, Tom Boyd says, I knew him as a kid. I said, the one thing that Celtic always knew is the ability. Uh, the ability on the ball. And he shows that. He says he doesn't panic. Yeah, when he gets the ball, he says he can take players on. He's got a full range of attributes, and he showed that at the weekend. He says his, his nature, that's what he says in the huddle, it came across. I don't know many body languages, many languages he speaks, but, um, you know, Callum McGregor was the only person that could have took over from Scott Brown. You know, he was the only person that was at Celtic that could have took, taken over. And, you know, there are different types of players, because Scott Brown was a bit more vocal on the pitch, and um, you know, but you see that in Callum. You do see that in Callum. And Tom Boyd had a little nod to the of the hat to Callum, and uh, saying that for me, that performance was needed by Callum. And uh, Tom Boyd went on to say, like the rest of the squad, he had a quiet start to the season, but what set him apart um, was this game, and that this three points could be so crucial. So crucial in the league. He says, look, he's a long-serving player and he's core. He's absolutely core to what Brendan Rodgers is trying to do at Celtic. So with the players having some time off this week, it was, uh, it was nice to hear Brendan Rodgers saying that um, he's taking his family up north to the highlands of Scotland rather than coming over to the outrageous heat in Spain to his holiday villa. And uh, he said that it's something he wants to do more more at his time at Celtic is spending more time up in the Highlands and seeing more of Scotland because it's something that he didn't do enough the first time around. Brendan Rodgers, still full of smiles from the weekend, says, uh, now it's an international break, I've got a couple of days away in the Highlands, and I'm going to enjoy it because it's an incredible life and it's an impre incredible country. He says, it's amazing how quick I've settled back into Glasgow. Uh, for example, now I've got a couple of days off, we're away in the Highlands. I said, I just want to enjoy it. I said, I want to enjoy it. Um, because let's face it, you never know when it could change, but the international break is a good time to just see a bit more of the country. So tell me what your thoughts are on that. And people did ask at the time why um, people asked, why is Peter Lowell back at Celtic? Peter Lowell had some unfinished business in his football career, and that was to get a role in the, on the European stage, and he's managed to do that. So hats off to Peter. Um, we have had our differences over the years, and um, I'm, I'm never going to be a cheerleader for you. But he's managed to get that post that he's always dreamed of, and he's now vice chairman of the European Club Association. It's something that Peter's always aspired to at his time at Celtic, and it's good that he's now got that. He's got another four-year cycle of uh, being an influential leadership in European football, and that'll just drive the zombies <laughs> to despair. The fact that they think he actually controls the whole of Scottish football, um, and now he, he's now in a position where he's in charge on the European stage. You can't make it up on this week, and this week of all weeks, just to rub salt into the wound, Peter Lowell now has a job on the European Club Association. So on that note... Tata zombies, thanks for watching. <laughs> Have a great day, Celtic fans all around the world. Let roll up to the party, roll up, roll up to the party, roll up.